Hi, everybody. This is Anne Louise, and here we are once again. And you know, I wonder how many of you are feeling tired or anxious or stressed or irritable in this day and time. I mean, if you think about all the hurricanes, the natural disasters that we've been suffering through, the flooding, the, the earthquake. I mean, it's no wonder that so many of us feel like we're nervous wrecks. Well, when I think about the top 10 vitamins and minerals we all should be taking, probably the number one mineral of all that comes to mind when you're trying to deal with a stressful situation or anxiety or irritability or hormone rescue, and that's magnesium. I truly believe that of all the minerals that we have out there, number one should be magnesium. I'm a big believer in taking magnesium day in and day out, particularly if you're very tight, if you can't lose weight, if you're not going to the bathroom, if you've got heart disorders, if you've got issues in terms of your brain and clear thinking, and if you are trying to simply relax and have some stress relief, there's nothing like a magnesium bath, which is your your Epsom salts, for example. And the latest research suggests that getting into a tub filled with hot water and two cups, two cups, that's two cups of Epsom salts for at least 20 minutes will relax your system and increase blood levels of magnesium. The best way to figure out whether you need magnesium or not is through a red blood cell magnesium test. And what we're now learning is that 8 out of 10 of you are deficient in this very important mineral. And my recommendation is to take 5 milligrams of magnesium for every pound of body weight. So most of my followers are now taking anywhere from 800 to 1,000 milligrams, which is also very helpful for high blood pressure. So when we talk about top minerals for females particularly, and I think the men can listen in too, we're talking about number one, magnesium. It is involved with at least 350 different processes, and it's really deficient when you take a look at the red blood cell magnesium tests that are now on the market. So number one is magnesium. It is by and far more important than calcium, which we now realize we don't need in the tremendous amounts that we were taught so many years ago. And I never recommended a lot of calcium. I used to do tissue mineral analysis tests. I was finding so much unabsorbable magnesium in hair tissue. We took away all calcium products, particularly dairy-rich calcium cheese that was made in this country, and found that calcium was then better able to be absorbed, and you only needed a small amount. A little bit goes a long way. When it comes to the ratio, you want two to one magnesium to calcium, and then you're home free. So number one, magnesium. Bring on the Maggie. Number two, my favorite next mineral for those of us under stress, distress, and tension has to be zinc. Because in many of the tests that we're doing, we're seeing how zinc is so very related to progesterone synthesis. It is a precursor for progesterone. And when progesterone is out of balance with its sister hormone, which is, which is estrogen, then we have estrogen dominance. And that's a situation, of course, that I talk about in Before the Change, which has now been released and is available at Amazon. So you can buy it now with the little button at, at the top of my page. And I would say that zinc is also important because it's an antiviral. So if you come down with a lot of virus and you can't seem to shake the flu, then you're going to want to really increase your zinc. If you're a vegetarian, you're going to want to increase your zinc. A vegetarian diet is legendarily, legendarily low in zinc, and it's high in copper, which is the antagonist mineral to zinc. So we need at least 45 to 50 milligrams of zinc a day. I personally like a zinc gluconate. You can find it in pumpkin seeds. You can find it in meat. You can find it in those organic eggs. So we've got your, your zinc number two. Number Number one, of course, is magnesium. And then number three, if I thought about nutrients per se, and I'm going to widen the net a little bit, I'd like to talk about linoleic acid. And that is the good omega-6s, because when it comes to nervous conditions, you're going to want to really supplement and support 
the membrane of the cell, and that comes with linoleic acid. So in my estimation, one to two tablespoons of hemp seed oil a day, not just flaxseed, but a little hemp seed oil, will be very important so that you get the good omega-6s that compose the cell membrane. So number three, then, is your linoleic acid, which can be found richly in hemp seed oil as well as safflower seed oil if you can get an unprocessed, unaltered kind, and that would be a terrific adjunct for you for weight loss and for calmness in terms of keeping your your focus, keeping your ability to stress at a, an even keel. And it's also important for the skin. When you think of the skin and the beauty of the skin, you always think of the good omega-6s. So now we've got one, two, three. The number four top element for women I'm going to say is one that I know you're going to all resonate to, and of course that's good old vitamin D. So vitamin D, D is definitely the bomb. I mean, D is where it's at. We, we know this in terms of your immune system, in terms of helping to prevent all different types of diseases. It's also important for the absorption of magnesium. So if your D is low, increase magnesium, increase your D and make sure you're taking D, which is an oil-soluble vitamin, in an oil. There's certain Ds on the market that are water-soluble. I believe if you're going to get your D, look at cod liver oil, or you can look at a product in which the D is emulsified in a little bit of coconut oil. So there you have number four, I believe, and that's vitamin D. Number five, one of the top elements for women. I've got to say that it's boron in my humble estimation. Why boron? Because, as I've mentioned to you before in some of these Facebook Lives, boron is a precursor to estrogen, number one, as well as testosterone, number two. Very, very important for the bones, which is why I told you to take four prunes a day for osteoporosis, because prunes from the last Facebook Live are a very high source of boron, which is very deficient in the American system, the American soil. So now we've got boron. We're on to number six. Number six is iodine. You cannot live without iodine. We're very iodine deficient in this day and age. So many of us have hypothyroid conditions, which really necessitate some iodine. I'm really in favor of some of the new varieties of iodine, which are roll-on types of iodine, not just the drops that you take in the Lugo solution or the iodorol, which are good sources, of course, but I love the algae and I love some of the roll-ons that you can use, particularly in the area of the thyroid, to nourish the thyroid. When you don't have enough iodine in the diet or as a supplement, then all kinds of chemicals can, dis can displace the iodine, and that's where fluoride toxicity comes into play. Bromine, for example, as well as chlorine. So number six is none other than iodine. On to number seven. So number seven is manganese, because nobody's talking about manganese. Manganese is magic, because that's what it really means. So manganese is important for blood sugar, and it's also important for your bones. Now, a lot of you are concerned because you, you know that I've written books like Before the Change and Super Nutrition for Women about women's issues, and bones come into play. Well, magnesium is important for the bones. Lysine is important for the bones. D3 is important for the bones. Strontium could be important for the bones with many women, but so can manganese. And a lot of times when your issues don't heal, it's because you're deficient in manganese, which is highly deficient in the diet. At least 10 to 30 milligrams a day of manganese, and I love that in a gluconate form. So now I believe we've got number seven. We're on to number eight. Now, number eight, when I think of the top nutrients for women, you know, I really have to think about vitamin E because nobody is talking about that little vitamin either. And I like all the different varieties of vitamin E that you can get in one pill these days. I like the tocopherols and I like the, um, I like the, the different forms in, in terms of the, the gamma tocopherols are very important. The tocotrienols is what I wanted to say. That's very important in terms of the heart. So I think vitamin E is highly underrated. When I was very young, many, many moons ago, about 30 to 40 years ago as we speak, I remember working in a health food store and so many individuals coming in and saying that their 
whole systems had become revitalized when they were taking 400 to 800 IUs of vitamin E. Many individuals would shop at the health food store for a good source of vitamin E because they'd been to see the Shute brothers up in Canada that had saved their husband's lives in terms of their heart conditions. So I'm loving vitamin E, 400 IUs to 800 IUs a day. There's some great products on the market if you need a brand name recommendation. Just post underneath this particular video. I'll give you that very directly. And I think that vitamin E is one vitamin that we can never, never ignore. So next to vitamin E, number nine is vitamin C, the premier antioxidant. And I'm loving vitamin C very specifically because it can cure certain types of major degenerative disease. Very, very important for IVs when you've got some kind of situation that is autoimmune, for example. Just make sure it's non-corn-based vitamin E because so much corn in this country or so much vitamin C has a corn base. And anywhere, tell you the truth, between 500 and sometimes up to 7,000 or 10,000 units a day, magnesium of MGs a day is very important for vitamin C. It should be taken, of course, with the bioflavonoids, which help your capillaries, in spe very specifically rutin. And I think that vitamin C is another one of those important vitamins that people are not talking about anymore. But years ago, some of our most avant-garde and enlightened MDs used to use their vitamin C in IVs to cure polio, and it's now being used in certain alternative clinics in terms of curing cancer. So vitamin C is absolutely terrific. Last but not least, in terms of nutrients, and again, we've widened the net. It's not just vitamins and minerals. We've talked about essential fatty acids, those trace elements. I've got to say glutathione. You know, glutathione is the premier detox eliminator. It's the detox zapper. There are many ways that you can produce glutathione. The precursors include vitamin C, which to me is one of the most important. And there are also products on the market, like one that I'm very proud to know, which is a stabilized bioactive redox signaling product known as ASEA, which has the ability innately to enable your entire body to produce its own high levels of antioxidants like glutathione up to 500%. Glutathione is extremely important if you have an MTHFR defect, which is very common in 60 to 70% of the population or so we're learning. And I think that having it on a daily basis will assure us that in some way we're able to detoxify all the environmental assaults that are coming our way, whether it's radiation, heavy metals, bacteria, or even problems with parasites. So with whatever you decide to do, food, of course, is your best friend, but I'm not one who believes you can get all of these important nutrients from food anymore. I think that the environmental assaults, the electropollution that we're living under, and just the stress of living probably necessitates a little help from our vitamin, minerals, and essential fatty acid friends. So I know you may have some questions, and my trusty aide is sitting behind the camera ready to tell me what your questions and concerns are, so we'll just take a few. Allie. All right, Alyssa says, I saw you mention the benefits of ASEA in the new fat flush plan. Can ASEA help with irritability, insomnia, and mood? You know, it's very interesting. This product, which is known as ASEA, came on the market several years ago. And it was one that I was introduced to by many friends, but never took seriously until I went to the headquarters of the ASEA company and visited them in Salt Lake City. It's really um, a remarkable product because it turns on genes. And that's the only way I can really cut to the chase. It turns on gene expression. And as we get older, your genetic expression really diminishes. This kind of signals your body to be healthy the way it originally should have been. So what I would say that because it allows the body to communicate with all its cells, its three trillion cells much more efficiently, that it's very helpful for many conditions, including those of irritability, anxiety, and even depression, I dare say, in some cases. Noelle says, I take B6 almost daily because you recommended it. Does it really help with fluid retention elimination? Oh, my gosh. Miss, who said this? Noelle. Noelle. Yes, indeed. Years ago, there was a book written called The Doctor Who Looked at Hands by Dr. John Ellis. 
And he was a big believer in B6, and this was brought to my attention through his book, to relieve water and fluid retention. Now, B6 in its activated form, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, or vitamin B6 straight, is one of the most important vitamins we have to remove excess fluids. And it's very deficient, so sometimes we need to take a little extra. Anywhere from 25 to 100 milligrams can be very helpful. I can't give you a food that's really high in B6 because we lose the Bs, including B6, because they're the stress vitamins. So taking an extra B6 or a B6 vitamin supplement that has all the other complementary Bs, I think is very crucial, especially when we're under such tension in this day and age. For those who don't already know, could you tell us a little bit about the updates of Before the Change and Fat Flesh? Okay, all right, so I'm very happy to talk about that. <clears throat> One of the reasons that I talk to you about some of these vitamins and minerals is because I really update this entire book. As some of you know, I wrote this book originally in 1999, I mean, over 10 years ago, my gosh, almost 20 years ago. And there's been a lot of change in the environment and change in phytoestrogens in the hormone disruptors in the environment, which I felt affected our own hormones. So I wrote this book. I also have included new information about the detrimental effects of gluten on the thyroid, particularly the, for those of us that have Hashimoto's. This also talks about the estrogen window, which is important if you're going to use any kind of estrogen therapy, and what some of the best foods, the, the best phytonutrients, and the best tried and true essential oils are for many of our hidden perimenopause problems. So that's why I decided to update this book. That's number one. <clears throat> number two, when it comes to the new fat flush plan, you know, my first book came out in 2001, and that's almost a good, what, 20 years ago, or in 2017, 20 years ago. We had five hidden weight gain factors. We now have 10, including parasites that can zap you and make you fat, including the inability to make bile appropriately, including the detrimental effects of a low thyroid and adrenals. All of that is updated and included in the book, so it's a one-stop shop for anything that you're suffering from in terms of weight gain, weight loss, and autoimmunity. So I think both of them are really good complements to each other. And if you want to enjoy the book and then join our community, just find us at the Facebook what, what are we? We're fat in the Flesh Fat Flesh Nation. Nation. <laughs> it's been a long day. I just came back from a cruise, so I'm still cruising. Uh, join us at the Fat Flesh Nation. I'm active on, on that particular Facebook page, and I enjoy listening to you, having, knowing what, what's going on with you, seeing that I can help you directly. It really keeps me having a pulse on what's going on with my readers. But more importantly, if you have any questions about Before the Change or any of my books, just go there because they're all very similar in terms of the diet that I recommend and whether you're in hormone havoc or you've got issues with your weight because of hormonal weight gain, we can talk about the foods, we can talk about supplements, we can talk about therapies, we can talk about body, mind, and spirit. And it's all there. So join us on the Fat Flush Nation. Debbie would like to know how and when should you take your zinc and B vitamins? How and when to take zinc? Take it after your food. So zinc in the morning, if you'd like, uh, B vitamins at lunch and dinner, and I like a 50 milligram for the B vitamins, that number, 50 milligrams, 50 to 100 if you're really under a lot of stress, with a B complex that is yeast-free, we don't want any yeast, yeast-free, and make sure the B vitamins are methylated. So you want a methylated folate and you want a methylated B12. Julie asks, why can't you take glutathione during a parasite cleanse? Okay, so <clears throat> I just did a parasite summit, and we've gotten a lot, a lot of uh, questions about parasites and how it affects weight loss and vitamins and minerals. So when you are getting rid of those nasty critters that are in many of us, unfortunately, probably one in four of us or one in three of us has a real problem in this day and age and we may be carrying up to four different types of 
uninvited guests. You can have a lot of foods that are high in antioxidants because according to some of the best parasitologists I know, those antioxidants and heavy duty probiotics can feed the parasites. And you want to get rid of them and kill them and bind up the toxins that they release because parasites are like a Trojan horse. They get into your body and they are some of the ones that are the purveyors and carriers of virus, bacteria, and heavy metals. So the issue here is that you do not want to enliven them and feed them. You want to depress their activity, get them out of your system, and bind up their toxins. So then once we do that during the course of treatment with my colon cleansing kit and follow my program and the diet recommendations, then you can begin your glutathione, your A, and your E, and your C thereafter. And that should probably be after a four to six week period. All right. Do you have any specific brands that you love for these supplements that you recommended? Okay. So which ones in particular? Do we know? My favorite, my favorites. Okay. We definitely had magnesium. Oh, so magnesium. So I created a magnesium. So I mean, it's the one I wanted to find on the market, but I couldn't. So in conjunction with my partner of many years, which has been Unikey, as you may know, I created a product called Mag Key, and it has four different kinds of cofactors, not just one, not just two, but four of the best cofactors I could find that targeted the magnesium to the brain and to the heart and to the muscles. So Mag Key is my favorite. It's a Unikey health product. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that we have agreed today is the 21st, so happy fall. I think today is the first day of fall. Last day of summer, I believe. Oh, it's the last Saturday day of summer. summer. Okay, well, happy Same last thing. day of summer. But in, in honor of the, of the last day of summer, we still have a 20% uh, discount going using the code FL. What is our code? FL. We'll get that for we'll you. We'll post it. We're going to post the code. On this video. We're going to give you. A, we're going to give you the right code to get some of the Unikey products. Uh, which is, I think, good till the end of the month. So you can try out the, um, that, that particular product, which is Mag Key. So that's my favorite when it comes to that. When it comes to, what was our uh, zinc? Vitamin E and C were asked about. Okay. It's the Yarrow, the Jero. It's the Jero E. They have a family E, and I really like that product. I think it's just terrific. Family, it's a very cute name, family, but family E, with an, you'll see in the health food store with, you know, the E, the letter E. So we've got the Jero E, and what was the other one, Allie, that I just talked about? Mad Key. Mad Key, the vitamin E, I like specifically. Vitamin, e. vitamin yeah. D is biotics because it's an oil, it's emulsified. And I, I have seen, and I'm not just giving you the name brands of these companies. I have, I have no connection with many of these companies, but I am a brand ambassador for Unikey. What I can tell you is that I've seen results on some of our tissue mineral analysis using certain brands and also on blood tests. So biotics is one of my favorite because it's a vitamin E emulsified with just two little drops. You'll get like 4,000 IUs a day, and I think it can be very helpful in raising the levels. I'm a big believer that we need anywhere from 50 to at least 80 on your vitamin D test, 50 to 80. So the other one was manganese. I like um, Solaray, not Solaray, Solgar. I mean, I like Solaray as well, but for manganese, I like Solgar. Boron, any brand out there, Doctor's Best would be terrific. I like three milligrams a day of boron, very important for your bones, your hormones. Iodine. Uh, iodine. Okay, so here's the, here's the kicker with iodine. This is a kicker. What we're learning with iodine is that it can be a tricky mineral. And it's a trace mineral at that. And so I used to tell people about the, the taking of Lugo solution, one to five, even seven drops. We live here in an area that I feel is a little polluted because there are all kinds of things happening down in Hanford, which is a nuclear facility. And I believe that most people here living in the north, northern Idaho, my clients here, have benefited from seven drops of, of the Lugo solution, eight ounces of water. Having said that, there are individuals that will complain because of that mixture in Lugo solution of two different types of iodine 
that it's very very harsh on the stomach. So in that case, sometimes we go to the iodorol, which gives you um, a little bit more, I think, per per uh, caplet in terms of the uh, amounts of iodine. But the one that I like the best, and this is the drum roll, please, the one that I like the best is a new one called Third Eye, Third Three R D I, not E Y E, but I dot com. And it was created by a gentleman who is an absolutely brilliant researcher. And that is the one that I am currently using. And I use it as a roll on. I like creams like the Progestiki that I developed and talk about in this book. And I also love, love, love this new product because I use it and I put it directly on my thyroid. Because as I've gotten older, my metabolism, which used to be, I could eat anything just like so many of you. I mean, I have to watch it just as clearly and carefully as so many of my, as so many of my fans because there's too much radiation in the environment. We've got Fukushima. You've got nuclear radiation and the radiation that comes from the cell phones that we all can't live without, the non-ionizing radiation that can still impact your system. So having said that, it's the third eye roll-on iodine. Debbie wants to know if hypothyroid. Could Allie repeat that while I take a long drink oh, yeah, of water? No. <laughs> Debbie's asking if you can do iodine with hypothyroid. Most people can do iodine with hypothyroid. I mean, I would check with your healthcare practitioner with whatever I'm telling you. I don't know your particular history. People that have Hashimoto's may not be able to tolerate certain types of iodine, particularly Lugol solution. So they would definitely have to confer with their practitioner. But when it comes to Hashimoto's, I do know that a low gluten diet or a gluten free diet is absolutely essential, as well as selenium at 250 to sometimes 300, 500 MCGs and two grams of cumin black seed or black cumin seed. All right, and we will wrap up with one more kind of general question. I've let everyone know um, because of some inquiries that you can do consults with anyone in the world. Is there any specific testing like blood work that you recommend people do prior? So for what I find very helpful for testing, and I do work with people um, when I'm in town. I do a lot of traveling these days and I'm also researching a new book. But what I can say is this, I really like a blood test. I, I need a blood test, number one, which it will give you the basic values. The CBC we're going to look at. We're going to look at your whole thyroid panel. A little, if there's an issue with the heart, you want a typical heart panel that gives you your homocysteine, your C-reactive protein, and your ferritin. Remember the ferritin. Don't forget the ferritin. And I also like on that, let me see what they don't typically do anymore, um, a red blood cell magnesium. You ask for a red blood cell magnesium because that's the most accurate way of assessing magnesium needs. So I like that. The other thing that helps me, as you know, is the tissue mineral analysis. A little tablespoon of hair, you can get it through my office via Unikey, unikeyhealth.com. We can tell a lot from that in terms of how your body is excreting heavy metals and what's going on with your calcium. Because there's a lot of us that are taking in foods and supplements and wanting to build our bones as we get a little older past the perimenopausal stage. And I can tell from your tissue calcium whether you are actually building or you are breaking down your bones. And that's very important as we get older and hopefully as we get wiser. The other thing that I see in that TMA that has always puzzled me is the elevation in many cases of uh, cobalt. And that is a cofactor for B12. I, for years, had the highest cobalt of any of my clients. And nobody, not even the director of the, of, the, of the tissue mineral analysis company, could tell me why. Well, it turns out that I do not methylate B12. And for years, I'd been taking a B complex with a cobalamin, cyanocobalamin B12, rather than a methylated one. Started on the methylated B12 because I have an MTHFR, I'm a homozygous on 1298, and voila, everything went away. So now I know because of my situation what to tell you. So to wrap up, a TMA would be helpful but not 100% necessary. I would like to see a blood test on a fasting blood sugar.
So now as I leave you with my voice wandering and wilting <laughs> and fading, I want to wish you all a wonderful weekend. Happy New Year to those of you that celebrate, and we'll see you next time.